Hey everybody, Susan Garrett here, and really excited to have my longtime friend. Uh, well, you're, I'm not sure if you're going to appear this way or this way, so I'm going to go both ways. Uh, Nikki Gurr, um, fellow hey. Canadian, all the way from the other coast in Canada, and um, really, uh, and I, we, we. Um, gave everyone your links to read your blog it was an amazing blog nikki thank you for putting all that work in thank you it was kind of fun it was yeah it was really so so um what inspired you to put it all together you know what the last three projects that i've done um i have sat down at my computer and i've just started dabbling with stuff really without the intent and then it just takes over and it's 2 a.m. in the morning and I'm still typing and I'm like, oh my God, this is too exciting. Mm -hmm. So this project started last summer when I got a hold of that Dog Vision uh, HD app. And I took it outside to the front yard um, and I was really curious to see from the dog's perspective what it was like to go through my tire, which at that time was red and yellow, mm -hmm. and also down my A-frame just before I got it recoded. And it really shocked me. Um, I didn't realize that my grass was as yellow as my contacts. And that was a real light bulb moment. Better your than mine doing that. <laughs> so that was a real light bulb moment because I think many of us have considered the colors of our equipment. But I really don't think many of us are thinking about how it's contrasting with the environment um, and how significant that is. So, um, you know, if you train in different places, perhaps that one set of equipment or at least jump bars isn't going to take you to those different venues. And so, like you and I were talking before we went live here, and I was just sharing with you how at our World Team tryouts last weekend, it was the building is was white walls, and the the bars were were white white bars, yeah, with a little bit of red. And oh. let's just go and show here. I'm going to share share this. Um, so uh, this is what. Nikki's shirt looks like and you can see the red see the red this is the on the, the left here is what the dogs see this is what humans see on the right and you can see the red goes away yeah right it's it's not there it's kind of a gray icky color. and you're looking at that on a solid shirt whereas a bar is floating in space um, over at that facility, it's turf, so the turf's going to look pretty close to something between yellow and green on that, or yellow and red. Let me just show you. So I have um, red and white contacts in my building, and so this is what the red and white looks like. Um, so the 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 white is like and this is a really dark red but they're just little red stripes on the bar i wish i'd taken a picture of that bar because i'm like in the white background with the white bar they're not seeing it they're, no. they're just not seeing it right so and that was that was the thing that i'm like um why are these dogs crashing it? They finally, and they couldn't change it out because the top bar was a little bit bigger than the bottom bar because it was a double. And so the, finally the second day they found one that had a little black striping and guess what? Dogs didn't crash the double again. So it, it was red, still white with red stripes, but in the middle of the red stripes, there was some black striping. So it at least it popped Yeah. dogs and the dogs could see it. So um, it's the thing that, you know, I'm just going to show this picture a little bit bigger um here you go so so you can see the one picture with swagger this is what we see and this is the, a foot target that i use with my dogs when i'm ready to transfer into the ring you can see on the right is using the the dog vision app and i'm going to get nikki to explain the difference in my pictures and hers in a second um you can see that the white and the yellow blend together right so that isn't something that we necessarily want to be using and then this is um, what I've gone to since I started using the app. So this is human vision on the left, red, white, and blue. Yay for all you Americans. And this is what the dogs see. You can see when I went to a, yellow, a, a blue foot target, it was really, really obvious to the dogs, right? Yeah. Really, really obvious. So um, why don't you 
explain, Nikki, a little bit about why um, pe people are seeing your pictures are a little bit different than mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you pull up the foot target because when I was snapping the pictures last summer, um, that's the change I made. I started using a black foot target at the base of that A-frame. But when I took that target away for one particular dog, um, all those hits were higher, even though she had an understanding of the target behaviors. And I think it was just because that wasn't enough contrast for that dog. Mm. And the app, um, I like the dog vision app. I looked at a few of them, but some of them you have to be careful because they use a sort of a greenish tone versus the yellow. And of course, the dogs don't see green. Green comes out as a form of yellow. So you don't want to be influenced by seeing green tones. Um, the app will automatically make the images fuzzy mm -hmm. uh, because it's a known fact that the dogs don't have the full on clarity that uh, for many of them, but for some just like us, um, it's the opposite of that. So without my contact lenses, you know, I'm a minus three and a half and a minus 2.75 and some of the dogs are right there. I also have astigmatism. So one thing I really want to do is I want to take the glasses off and go outside and look at something, you know, at the 75 foot mark, like a jump on my field. Um, dogs have 20, 75 vision. So that means that whatever, whatever we might see at 20 feet, um, that's how, sorry, whatever we would see at 75 feet for detail, that's how the dog would see that at just 20 feet. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to take a look at something at 75 feet without my glasses, and then I was going to put my glasses back on and pull out the SLR camera and try to duplicate what that was, right? So it can be a real hot mess if you think about it in terms of it's fuzzy, they don't see the same color spectrum, and they're really wired to detect motion versus still objects. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that works for prey, right? Like if they freeze, predators aren't as successful as if prey is running. Exactly. So the app tends to make the images fuzzy, but you can click on, there's a little glasses icon, and if you click on that, it will sharpen it right up. So all of the pictures that I used for the study, I didn't want to get into the variable of clarity. So I wanted apples to apples and the human spectrum was clear and the dog spectrum was clear just so we could examine contrast and dominant colors. So even though we know because of the difference in the dogs have more rods <laughs> in their eyes, we have more cones yes. that the dogs are not going to see. They see better in low light than we do. Yes. Um, and I, I just want to say about that because people, you know, when the dogs get older, they, they, you often hear them say, oh, it's, I can't run in that dim barn for my dog anymore. I actually wonder if we got into more dominant bar color, if those older dogs could have a better time playing in the barns. I don't know if it's the low light per se as the wrong bar color. Mm. And I think, wouldn't it be great if down the road, people took this information and not only are bar colors and tire colors and contact colors considered, but also the background, like you mentioned, like, yeah. In the okay, so in the barn we were in for World Team Trials, it was white walls. The walls yep. in our building are kind of a gray green color. And in yep. most barns, you know, they're they're kind of a brown color. So yeah, like, and the, go ahead. Yeah, and the, all of those wall colors in the dog vision app, they all come through as yellowish shades of yellow against these yellow bottom uh, floor coverings, right? Exactly. Um, so white, the dogs see white, however, white really doesn't have a lot of contrast against a lot of yellow. And the thing is that, um, so sure, even if you, like, like people get uh, uh, offended because they say, oh, well, this app is showing things fuzzy, and how do we really know? We don't really, nobody has, you know, been able to, you know, take the eyes of a dog and stick them in their head. No, we just know by the physiology of the makeup of the eyes that this right. is what happens when. And right. so um, this is the, the best and the closest guess. We know that dogs uh, do not see the same way we do. Let's all agree on that one. No, but I think the physiology. 
Yeah, yeah the physiology is so similar. Um, and I've had at least a dozen veterinarians uh, comment about this article. Um, and, uh, you know, a nervous, I'm not a vet, I'm not an ophthalmologist. They did a bit of reading. Um, so fortunately, you know, they didn't come back at me and say, this is complete hogwash. You've, you've got this all wrong. So um, I don't think it's too far fetched to buy in that. Um, I don't think it's difficult to determine that, uh, you know, we're on that trichromatic and they're on that dichromatic spectrum. I think they can do that analysis by. Uh, and and I just want to share with everybody that um, Nikki has always had this. Uh, she's always been a great photographer and has always had this interest in photography and obviously is a great dog trainer and, and you know, has been on um, several world teams. And so it's just a natural extension like that. This, this all came together in the way it did. I'm just going to share with you guys. Um, this little video that I took using the app. And what I did was I blended two videos. So first you're gonna see, I have two toys on the ground. They're they're identical, but different colors. And I tell Encore to get one. And you're gonna see, it's just a few seconds where it then blends into what, what we're really seeing. Okay, so I'm just gonna share that. So I'm gonna make this go big so you all can see it. And I'll just run, it's just seven seconds, hold on. Corey, get it, get it. So it, you can see that's what 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 she was really seeing, and this is there. This is what uh, the dog saw, and this is so when you're choosing the toy, yellow yeah. handle on a green carpet is maybe not the best toy selection for your dog. Totally, right? yeah. Same as the it, orange hockey balls; they disappear too. Absolutely. So you you know you just want to be careful when you're deciding what toy you're going to be using. Um, if it it goes back to the 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 you know the bars. So I want to talk Nikki about um, those of you watching this, whether it's live or once this gets posted to my blog. I would encourage you all to set up a similar study to what Nikki did. Um, and maybe even go a little step further. So a very simple pattern, agility pattern. One of the things, Nikki, I think would even make it more interesting is if you did a blind cross in the middle where the dogs don't get a chance to scope that bar until the last second, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to change it. it and, the, and if we're doing a, a study where we're trying to be scientifically sound and you put a, a blind in there, all of a sudden it becomes a double blind and then it's really scientifically sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I'm, what I'm getting at is, so if you have a class, you're instructing or you're in a class and you've got, say, eight dogs in that class, what you would do is you would have really dominant colored bars and those would be ones with, with black. And, and we, and here's the thing, John, back in 1996, 98, he painted some bars for me, white and black, big chunks of black, big chunks of white. And that's all I've ever trained on. And then I, I moved from those to the popular uh, colors that you'll see in trials before the dogs go into the ring. So, you know, my dogs have all been pretty good jumpers. And maybe it's because of these bars that John made for me that helped grow their confidence because they could really understand. That's exactly what I've got. So um, it's I think it's John being like very, very uh, finicky. Fin 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 Finicky, there's perfectionistic. No He's a perfectionist. <laughs> he it's like six inches, six inches, six inches. Um, so so going back to you have a class or you're in a class, you run a class, you've got a group of dogs, divide them into four. And so so Nikki, let's set this up for them. Um, first of all, if you've got two border collies or four border collies, you want to get if we're making two groups, we want to get similars in each group, right? So that they're mm -hmm. balanced. Mm -hmm. So uh, Really driven dogs, um, you know, dogs that, that aren't as driven. Um, if you got, you know, golden retriever, put one in each group or sporting dogs, put one in each group. But the thing is, you've got to try to balance the variables. So maybe um, if you have two goldens, let's say the first golden is going to jump the easy to see bars. The second golden first, they both jump both bars. First golden do the easy to see bars first and then the. Other golden do does the hard to see bars first, and then you flip. Yeah, you can't change two variables and then say this is a conclusion, right? Yeah. So you yeah. can, you can't and you can't have 
two different dogs doing two different things and say this is a conclusion. Yeah. So, so that was important. If you look at what Nikki did, one dog did it with one way and then one dog did it the other way. And then you might want to add, like I said, add some handling into that where where a dog doesn't get a chance to see that bar until the last second because yeah. that's everything. What I did was I had the dogs in most of the examples, I had the dogs run the difficult bar first. Um, and then I had them run the, the easier bar second because I thought if there was any patterning from the difficult one, you, you know, I would see that. And what we saw was a very different striding pattern, um, even though it was over one space. I did a very, I just wanted it to narrow down to something easy to see. So a distance from a tunnel to a jump in slow motion on my iMovie, I could see where the dog's height of the arc was, how many strides. I just looked at one little piece. Um, but we did on the setup where we had them different distances from a start line jump. Some of those dogs, we started with the dominant bar first. And guess what? The white bar afterwards was better. So when they started with white first, okay. black was different. When they started with black first, white wasn't too far off. So it almost looked like if you could give them a correct performance first and you didn't change anything and you let them do it again right away, they, they were able to apply that. So, so I that's, really that because that's really important, Nikki, because it goes back to one of the questions that keeps coming up. Okay, we've got barking, we've got telephone ringing, we've got everything. What that keeps coming up is um, much like, like if you have really, really good uh, grip surface that you're training on yeah. all the time, and yeah. then you go to trials and the dog is used to really good gripping surface, they're going to slide all over. So people have said to me, well, what if I train with really clear obstacles at home and then I go to trials and they get this crappy stuff? Yeah. Um, but what you're saying is if we can help grow their confidence and help them yeah. understand how to do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And that's exactly what I was going to say next, because I've had a few emails. People have said, yeah, but what if I go and I get these black bars and my dog's doing really well at home and then I go to a trial and they're all red and white bars. And I said, you know what? My dog's doing 95 percent of his agility in my backyard. Yeah. So I would rather have that be the safe and confident performance. And who knows, you know, maybe with all that repetition, maybe they learn to sight the bar through those wings. Maybe they make different associations that they can take to a trial. I agree right? 100%. You know, um, my little Jack Russell mix, she was rare. She, she just lacked confidence on triples when um, early in her career. And I just ha kept having really uh, obvious bars with a set pattern at home that there were certain number of strides to that bar. And, and I kept that the same for her for years. And after, I would say by the time she was five, she was striding beautifully at, at competitions. So like you said, they do 95% of their agility at home. That's where so we- That's the most important place. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's different than, um, you know, if you only provide perfect surface at home, then and they've never learned to adjust their footing. They've never yeah. you've never allowed them to go running in the woods. And then yeah. that's different. Yes, it's very yeah. different than what yeah. we're saying. Um, OK, so let's look at some of the other thing. Oh, I got another video I'll show you and then we'll show some of your your pictures. So let's put this one up here and put that one there. So this is three different toys. All right. So three different toys from what the dog sees and then it grows into what we see. So do you see the coloring makes a big difference? Like the Frisbee on the left, you can't really see it. And it, yet no. you can see in our eyes, wow, it looks like the most dominant toy in that picture. Right. So let's just address, you know, who who are the toy manufacturers selling toys to, right? So and with that, with that, I mean, I have I know that agility equipment manufacturers are really concerned about dog safety, right? Especially like with all the changes in our vinyl jumps lately. Yeah. But they're still they're trying to address their market, and it's people who are buying their products, not dogs. And people are really drawn to those bright colors of pink and red and yellow and green. And, you know, look what I'm wearing. I was drawn to all those colors. So 
I think it's very important that we realize, so here's how I'm looking at my summary of all this. I think the jump bar is the dog's real estate. I don't think we should be messing with that. And I think if you want to do your club branding on your equipment, you could do a little bit of contrast striping and a club's color on the bar. You can do some stuff on the wings, mm -hmm. but I just don't want to mess in with end to end of that jump bar for those dogs. I'm bringing up your picture here, Nikki, of uh, of jump bars. If you want to talk about this. Yeah. So I took these this morning. It's a beautiful day here. I told Susan I was tempted to sit on the deck of, I'm just getting my pull up and running. And then I said, no, we would lose viewers if I sat there. Cause <laughs> I this up. So, so I grabbed some of the bars I've been playing with. And what's interesting about that first picture is when you first look at it, you see the black bars. Um, they also, when they're stacked like that, they're not going to be as dominant as if it was just one on the wing. Mm -hmm. But the one that's really easy to miss is that very top one that's got the candy cane red striping. Um, mm -hmm. The one underneath it, at least, I mean, those are red, but at least those solid bands show better. And I think as the bars go down, you start to appreciate that more color is better versus splitting that up mm -hmm. um, you'll see that more from the dog's perspective i think pull that one up now the dog yeah. yeah okay good job yeah so that candy cane one on the top um that's that's hard the blue is a great color too um uh, you know because i live where i do all my study stuff i did on grass sand i have a fiber sand mix um I go to a barn once a week, so I, I got a chance to work on the dirt. And so all of my bar color choices were based on where I'm training. Mm -hmm. So I do have blue mats in my small training room. Um, all of these colors were great. My friend Kim Collins, she's got blue mats in hers. She set up some black and blue bars. They looked great on the blue mats. I haven't had a chance firsthand to play around on black mats. So. I do know that light reflects off those mats and they're probably not appearing jet black to okay. the dogs, but it's not just the flooring. And you mentioned this, it's the wall colors, you know, mm -hmm. it's what's at their horizon that's giving the contrast to these bars. So I'm thinking even if the mats are black, if your walls are white, you may well want to try black or blue on those surfaces. And it, like you said, it's something that people should be, um, like if, especially if they've got the app to get down yeah. at high level wouldn't it be yes. awesome for judges to set a course and then walk yes. around with the app and see see yes. what the dog sees i did that at a trial yesterday i was hopping in there taking pictures from the you know we had dogs popping out of poles i wanted to kind of know why and there were some really dominant bars beyond the wheat poles and the wheat poles were red and white mm. and there was blue but the blue was at the top third of bar and the red stripes were in the dog's zone. And that's where muscle memory helps because you know those those senior dogs were whipping through those poles no problem. You saw most of the pole popping in weird places. And when I see it in weird places, I usually am suspicious to think there's something going on, right? Like it's not just your 10 pole pop because it sees a tunnel, mm -hmm. um, right? So, so there's, there's a lot of people who've asked, I've seen this question come up so many times about, does it really matter what we wear? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. And you know, I say when I said, yeah, um, because I've been judging a lot lately. Uh, and I saw a picture. So if I'm judging, I often run a dog. And if I run a dog, I'm wearing black. And I thought, holy Hannah, you're the most visible thing out here. So now when I'm judging, I am hyper aware of just being a statue when those dogs come out of tunnels. Mm. Because they're trying to find their person, and if I'm more visible in black than their person, right? So, mm. believe me, I don't want to wear beige when I'm judging, but <laughs> but I'm very aware now if I'm wearing dark colors that um, that dog can pick me out over most of that equipment really quick. So, and I remember I posted a blog about this. I think it was a year ago when um, Swagger was. Um, I, I, coming, I don't know if it was, it was out of a tunnel, but it, but the judge tried to tuck in. Yes, I remember that video. And yeah. and, and the yeah. judge was wearing black. Yeah. And I'm like, where are you going? And I know. so yeah. it makes perfect sense because movement, number one, the judge's yeah. movement, and then number two, what the judge was wearing. So yeah. um, somebody else, yeah. mentioned, and this is kind of a, a touchy subject here in Canada, um, what if we wore black gloves? 
during t uh, training. A little touchy here because there's some controversy about somebody wearing gloves in the ring. But wouldn't that be great if we want our dogs to see our hands? You know, if we want to do a, a, a you know a really tight uh, collection and just yeah. a, this black hand kind of flies up. I um, wore black gloves because it's freezing. We don't have heated barns. That's why I wear them. <laughs> but it would be brilliant, wouldn't it, for the dogs, the yeah. contrast for them to really see. So, you know, we're going to see, a, you know, at the end of the day, training trumps everything. However, um, especially like like Nikki said, let's do what we can to give our dogs the, the best chance. So if it's a dimly lit barn, let's look at the contrast that we have for those dogs because the lighting isn't gonna be as big a deal, right? Um, yeah. Okay, let's see. Um, see, I'm just checking if there's any other questions here. And I, I think that's a great exercise that you did, Nikki, taking your glasses off to see what, you know, what you can see. Um, oh, I still have to do it, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to just memorize what that was like, grab the SLR camera and uh, try and duplicate that. Yeah. Oh, so I looked up this stat, right? Because I, I like numbers. So what percentage of Olympic athletes do you think have corrected vision? Oh. If you like in the dogs. I would think it wouldn't be any different than any other percentage of the population, would it? I don't know. I mean, for that age bracket, obviously yeah. they're not going to look at our age and compare that to Olympic. Yeah. So thirty percent. Okay. Wow. That's a third. So you know, for fine hand-eye coordination and all that, I mean, one third of them. So I liken bar color to the ability to help enhance our dog's vision. So you know, if we just grab that same number, and even if you say on a world stage, if a third of those dogs even could benefit from bolder color. Mm. Um, the thing about a lot of those big outside competitions is you're dealing with the environment throwing shadow. So if you've got colors on your equipment that tone into the color of floating shadow, that's why red, red's a great color if you can see it, but through the dog vision, it tends to when it's off the ground, outside especially, um, mm -hmm. my front yard's got a hedgerow behind it, so that throws dark. Um, and red off the ground it just looks like floating bits you can jump through mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right so um it's a tricky thing because if you're using a lot of red because that's your club's color or that's your country's color um again i think i think we just i'd love to see it come to a place where the bar is the dog's territory <laughs> you know absolutely um, and just recognize red is a complementary color, not a, a color that's helpful for them. Okay, so I'm just putting up a, a couple of, a, so here's one question, and it is, um, what is the app we're talking about? Just to clarify, it's called yeah. uh, Dog Vision HD, and yeah. um, there's a little, I don't know if you can see my phone here. Yeah. Um, Higher. There. So yeah. it's <laughs> that one right there in the center. That's yeah. what it looks like. It looks like a cat to me, but Dog Vision. Yeah. HD. And yeah. um, so that's what we're talking about. Another question that came up, um, what about the tunnels? So what about yellow tunnels? Uh, it, it, you know, is that a problem? I think yellow tunnels are fine. I think yellow tunnels with yellow tunnel bags by a yellow contact mm. uh, is a lot of yellow on a yellow surface. Mm. Because green, so, is, is, green appears very much like yellow. Yes. So the colors that appear like yellow would be all of your greens, your reds, your oranges, your pinks. Um, you know, all of those pretty colors, um, yeah. the rainbow, those bright ones, they all kind of have those yellow hues to them. So this isn't saying that you have to run out and change all of your expensive equipment, but you could do things like your tunnel bags, um, you know, maybe some duct tape in blue or black over the prominent edge. Like I love those ones that are the rectangular ones, you know. So you yep. could just put the tape over the little square cap endings. Yep. Right. So I mean, just to mark it from from the tunnel. Black ribbing is really good um, on the tunnels. So for future tunnel purchases, I think getting the black ribbing would be good. Um, so the light ones. The blue. So you know, there's other questions here. What about uh, what about the blue tunnels? Now, blue tunnels and black tunnels. We've seen even at the world championship level, dog go dogs go into these tunnels and yes. slow right down. And but yes. I don't necessarily think that's the color as much as the darkness. 
correct? Yeah, yeah. They, they, I mean, they're just dark. And Absolutely. although they see better in the dark than we do, when it's pitch black and there's a you still have to You still have to adjust. Exactly. You know, and you're running at six yards a second, so. And it's so we have one of those dark tunnels because that's one of the things I wish they would outlaw them at at big events or at any events because because um, dogs do hesitate in them and and it's got to be scary to not know where you are uh, but you see them come up every now and again so that's why we always have one around and train yeah. because you just don't know no what people it's are going to international see. standard. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great for all equipment, not just the the, the bars and and um, yeah. Okay, uh, so I'm just gonna pull. So and and to, there's a lot of people asking about blue. Blue is a great color for dogs. Okay. Um, blue so on is purple. So yeah. is purple. Yes, but it's all obviously if you're talking bars, it's great to have a contrast. So something like a white um and a blue and even a red and a black is fine because the red well the red it's not as great great as white but it is yeah so this one where is it so i had fun i got some little patriotic hockey tape to put on the contrast of that one that's awesome so it's okay right so the little red bits yeah. show yellow white on the black so that's awesome yeah, um wrote, uh, i train with i train i train with completely white bars, my dog has no problem. You know, maybe your dog has no problem, but I just, that is not a cool thing to do for dogs, yeah. right? It's, it's, um, and back in the day, we used to sometimes go internationally and they would have solid white bars or solid yellow bars. Remember those, yeah. Nikki? Yeah, like, they, they see the white, but I don't think the white is as defined. Depending um, on the background. Exactly, um, and it's interesting, because when I teach young dogs your two by two method, yep. um, I've got some dogs that'll be just fine if I slap white poles in there, and I've got others that can't figure it out. And as soon as I put in a black and white or a blue and white, they catch on. Really? Right? So, um, and how much of that is colored? How what's much that? Of, how much of the bar do you or the wee pole do you have colored? Oh, oh, it would be different now, but the bars I have now are sort of candy cane striped. Okay. Um, the I think with wee poles, I just did a set in blue. They're outside. But uh, somebody said, well, I think they thought there should be white just above the base because that would be easier for the judge to see the dog uh, versus starting the color right at the base. I just wanted to uh, just sidetrack one step here. When it comes to weave pull bases and tire frames, I think those need, I think the important piece there is that you want your weave pulls and your tire to be dominant. Um, this started that evening when you said, how did this project start? I was playing around with my tire with my young dog. That was an unbelievable and video, that one. I know. And in that red frame with those bad 45 degree legs, she kept sitting early. And the big aha moment was when I did the freeze frame, I thought, this isn't early. That is a beautiful set point centered over the front of those angled legs. And then I went and started looking at some ETS video. And I did freeze frames of those dogs. And guess what? Like some of those jumps where those feet were sticking out 12 inches, right. those set points were completely centered over the front of the feet. Wow. Because I think those are really dominant parts because the bars on those jumps were mm. white with a bit of red. Mm. You know, so all after, your, after your blog was published, um, Martina Klimsova Magnoli, who, you know, she's won world championships mm -hmm. and uh, has been very competitive with, with the, uh, with her Malinois and her Moody, most people know her with. And she she contacted me like that night and said, wow, because she's had um, problems with her young border collie jumping. And she said, you know, it's only the first day, but I just went out and put black tape on all my bars. Oh, and awesome. So much better immediately. Oh, that's so, awesome. Yeah. So, I need to hear um, that. Yeah, good. Yeah. And it's just, if you have a dog that, you know, is in that 30% Olympic athletes that don't have great sight, then yeah. making it as 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 clear as they can possibly have it is going yeah. to increase their confidence and 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 help them tremendously. Yeah. yeah. So with the weed pull bases and the tire frame, if mm -hmm. you're wondering what colors those should be, I've been recommending that they blend with your your footing. Mm -hmm. So the weed pull base, you don't want that to be dominant. The dogs don't need to see the bases of the feet. Most of them are offset these days anyway, right? 
So red is a great choice for that stuff because it just sort of blends in. Cool. Um, but you don't want the bat, the reverse of that on tires. So I've seen tire frames that are painted black and mm -hmm. the tire is red and blue. So there's a photo in that blog about um, showing a dog jumping through um, and he completely thought he was to jump over the red strap holding the tire to the frame and that strap was connected to the tire on a red chunk of tire mm -hmm. and in the dog vision app that red band and red chunk it just looked like a floating shadow and you saw a blue piece of tire above it and a blue piece of tire below it so it was like he was trying to jump through the two blue pieces Wow. And I think of some of the colossal uh, tire, yeah. you know, that Buzzy used to have. Yeah. And, um, it makes me want to go back and look at some of the footage of Buzzy doing tires and um, yeah. man, some of the things that he did to himself going through tires was unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so, so your weave pulls now will just, if you were starting today with a young dog. Yeah. You would so have I, the set that I did, I went for blue. So, my big vision is wouldn't it be cool if there could be a standard that in any agility ring, your single bars were blacks, let's just say, mm -hmm. your double and your triple and your tire and your weave poles were all blue. And then they would know, no matter where they went, what venue, they would walk in and they would know exactly, those are the singles and those are the three dimensional jumps, right? The, the biggies. Wouldn't that be great? Oh. Yeah, <laughs> dream big. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. Um, okay, so I don't want to hold you up any uh, too much longer. If you guys have any questions for Nikki, I'm just scrolling through, and um, and I will definitely post them here. And and this is, you know, this is something that's new, so it's going to evolve, right? And people are going to take that great information that you've put on your blog, and then they're going to try different things. And yes, I mean. I hope they do. And that's why I thought, let's get Nikki on and we'll talk about this because if we can get judges to start looking at that and if yeah. we can get, you know, people as a, as a movement that if we can say, Hey, don't put that red and white bar on the top of the double and the blue and white one on the bottom. That's yeah. Crazy. yeah. And so 10 bucks, right? 10 bucks to get a couple rolls of duct tape and it's so doable. It's not like in Canada where, you know, we all did the big swap out for clubs to get the vinyl jumps. I'm thrilled we got the vinyl jumps. I kind of want to know if you could turn back time, <laughs> how many of those crashes could have been prevented with just better colored bars. Mm. So, you know, you, you pick up a couple of rolls of tape, you play with this, You'd have fun at your class, just like you suggested, you know, split your dogs into group, run these guys on whites first and these guys on black and then switch them um, and see for yourself. I am now committed to all of my foundation puppy classes. They're only training on black bars. I That's want all these dogs. I don't know what their vision is down the road. I want all of them to be able to start with the best paw forward to seeing this stuff, right? Okay, this is another great question. Again, going back to one of the world team tryouts. Um, in Canada here, a lot of the doubles, I, I can't remember, they came in from one manufacturer in the States, not doubles, the wall jumps. They're a light, like a baby blue with white toppings that were like just on there really loosely. So this question is, um, what would oh, what would be the best color for a wall? and the top of the wall elements. So I look back at this wall and it was like a, a light color blue and then the, the, the pieces on the top were white. And I mean, I, I don't think Swagger ever took one without taking it down. And then one year, um, a Thomas Trey was judging tryouts and he looked at this wall. All that he did was took, take some blue tape, just like you had, <laughs> and he made a little X on each one of those pieces. Awesome. Now it is like three or four years later, we're still having trials at the same building and, and Tommy still little blue X's are on the top of all these yeah. pieces. And Swagger never touched touched it yeah. again. Never touched yeah. it again. Couldn't do that wall jump without taking the top pieces yeah. off. Yeah. But they don't see it on a white, white walls, nope. white little tops with no, yeah. no contrast and at all. Same as the long jump, right? You've got your five pieces and my my big guy, I mean, he's 23 inch tall border collie, but he he always looks surprised if he touches that fifth board because it's a what white board with a little bit of red yeah. striping. 
let's put instead of putting the stripes this way on the yeah. long jump board let's just put on the edge of the long yeah. jump a black striping on each board yeah. Ta -da! yeah that's it so pretty easy fixes um and you know if you start with duct tape you can always peel it off but i think people should play around with it and just just see you know see if the dogs look more confident are they running more forward or are they guessing um i chose to use the dogs that had some early takeoff or adding strides for that study because i thought wow you know if they can show a difference then it's surely going to just benefit every category um i was quite surprised it benefited them right and that's what you know there's a comment here from bath rogers she said maybe this should have been considered on some of these dogs that have been labeled ets that's exactly what you're saying yeah that's what i i'm kind of you know there's a lot going on in my head about it all but um uh i, I don't think their visual system is that different than ours um you know whenever i say to students or people at trials okay so you go out there without your glasses on and they laugh and i go why are you laughing and then they just keep laughing and i said but why are you laughing and they said well i couldn't do it i said so maybe colored bars or ver their version of glasses that's pretty easy yeah perfect right? yeah <laughs> okay nikki i'm not gonna hold you up anymore thank you so much i have some hearts for for nikki for spending some time with us and um thank you for you having me. yeah it's been brilliant and everybody that's watching, then I encourage you to try this with your dog. And like Nikki said, we're going to start with the um, the lighter colored bars first to see if you can see a difference. Like that's and 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 if if you see a difference, and you can even do this. This might be a great if we're gonna and, 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 because you said starting with the good colors first, you don't see much of, of a difference going no. to bad. What if you did half the class did good or crappy bars followed by good bars and then other half of the class did crappy bars followed by crappy bars yeah i and will then, i will say though that when i ran a control group of dogs that had no jumping issues yeah. um they ran equally well on the white and the black so people should set this up there might only be one or two dogs in your whole class that might show a difference but um you just have to video it and then slow it down and play it back and then see if you can see the differences. But even if good jumping dogs are great, here's the thing. Number one, with these dark bars, we're starting all the dogs off with great confidence. And number yeah. two, the we're guessing, you know, if we compare it to the human human race, 30 percent of these athletes yeah. have a struggle with eye problems. Why not make this possible for all dogs or make exactly. it as possible as we can make it? For as yeah. many dogs as we can yes that's and make awesome. the dominant parts dominant on um, the equipment perfect thank you so okay. much Nikki. thank you with you thank you everyone for being here and for your great questions bye okay